The Pet Milk Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The first evaporated milk, Pet Milk, presents Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Gil Stratton Jr., and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Keith Fowler and directed by Max Hutto with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. People do a lot of kidding about the terrible biscuits a bride bakes. But I'll bet a lot of brides are mighty good cooks, especially those who use Mary Lee Taylor husband-tested recipes. You see, first these recipes are developed in the famous pet milk kitchens. Then they're sent out to homes like yours, where the wives try the recipes and report what their husbands say about the food. Only those recipes given a big okay by husbands are called husband-tested. And you get one of these valuable husband-tested recipes on the label of every tall can of pet brand evaporated milk. And don't forget, when you get pet milk, you're getting milk that's double rich, concentrated to double richness by evaporation. And you're getting that milk for less generally than you'd pay for any other form of whole milk. So make sure the milk you buy is pet evaporated milk. And make sure the recipes you use are (laughs) husband-tested. There is much to be said for getting up at the crack of dawn and being out to greet the rising sun. (laughs) And look who's saying it right now as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, I tell you, McGee, that sunrise was just beautiful. Mm, Yep. There I was, you see, out in the backyard, hanging up a line full of your wet socks. Yep. When the sun came peeping up over the gas company. Yep. Yeah. Well, comes up at that side of town pretty every morning. I'm sorry I didn't get to see it this morning, but I run into trouble the first thing right off this morning. I couldn't get my dad ratted pajamas off till nearly 10 o'clock. Why not? I was asleep. <laughs> this really is great weather, though. A day like this makes me want to get outdoors and do things. Good. You know what I'm going to do right now? What? Take a nap. I'm going to put up the hammock in the backyard and stretch out in it. And did you ever see it to fail? Try to do something constructive and somebody always interrupts with a telephone. I'll get the it. phone. Don't worry about it. Well, you get it. I won't get it. 79 Wistful Vista, Molly McGee speaking. Me speaking. Who? Oh, yes. Oh, this afternoon, huh? No, not me this afternoon. All right. I'll tell him. Goodbye. Tell me goodbye. Who was it? Dr. Gamble's nurse. Huh? The doctor's out, but he left a note on her desk to call you. Me? Yes. She says to tell you to come to his office this afternoon. The doctor is picked today for your checkup. <laughs> what? Oh, no, he don't. I won't go. But, McGee, if he's picked today to do it... Let him I... pick some other day. Or better still, let him pick some other pigeon. <laughs> he's already picked this poor pigeon clean anyhow. <laughs> I don't need no checkup. Oh, now, McGee, we go through this every year. Uh, Why don't you just be a good boy this time and go have your examination? Because I don't need any examination. Every year it's the same old malarkey. Cut down on cigars. Take more exercise. Don't have so much fun. You ought to just write it to me in a letter and save me the trouble of taking my clothes off. Now, that isn't fair. Dr. Gamble is very conscientious. Conscientious, my fine, healthy clavicle. (laughs) That guy's been tumping thummies so long, it's nothing but a routine with him. I stretch out on the table, strip down like a hot rod car, and his mind is a million miles away. It is? Well, I admit I ain't no art study, but he don't even know I'm there. Well, he must, dearie. He always shudders at the first look. Yeah. He ain't thinking about me. When he looks down my throat, he's thinking about the first hole on the golf course. (laughs) When he jabs his finger in my middle, he's thinking about the pot roast he's going to have for dinner. Well, now, just the same, I think you ought to let him look you over. Who's that? that, If that's him, if that's Doc Gamble, I'll duck out the back way. Relax, relax. It's the old timer. Come in. Hello there, kids. Hi, daughter. Hi, Johnny. Hello, Mr. Old Timer. Hi, Old Timer. How are you, boy? In pink, Johnny. In pink. Good. How do you keep that way, anyway? You spend much time at the doctor's? Not me, Johnny. You get in the habit of running to the doctor, and it can change your whole life. Yeah. Like it done to my old friend Abner Cogleshell. <laughs> what happened to Abner? Well, sir. <laughs> Abner got a Charlie horse in his leg when he was a kid. Oh. Not being very bright, he thought he ought to go to a horse doctor. Oh, yeah. Veterinary fixed him up fine, and that done it. From then on, when he didn't feel good, back he went to the vet. <laughs> Why not if it made him happy? I started to change, daughter. Yeah. After a while, Abner's friends noticed that for breakfast he wasn't eating rolled oats or puffed oats. 
He was just eating plain oats. <laughs> kind of started thinking of himself as a horse, huh? Yep. Took to wearing a blanket instead of a coat. <laughs> cutting holes in his straw hat for his ears to stick through. <laughs> My heavenly days. Then... Abner fell in love. Oh, dear. Honey, he says to the girl, let's you and me get hitched. Okay, she says, and first thing she knew, he had a harness and a halter on the both of them. I suppose that ended the romance. No, daughter. Abner was so persistent, the jer- girl just couldn't say nay. They had a real nay. <laughs> <laughs> Too. Yeah? Church decorated with alfalfa blossoms, the organ playing, the light cavalry overture. <laughs> <laughs> While the bride trotted down the aisle wearing a floral horseshoe. <laughs> Sounds pretty high society, boy. They still married? And aren't? very happy, Johnny. Yeah? Been together ever since. And they got two fine youngsters named Whirlaway and Sea Biscuit. <laughs> Because your friend Abner got a Charlie horse when he was a boy. Yep. And an interesting thing occurred yesterday, daughter. Nay. Abner. <laughs> Abner was playing cow ponies and Indians with the youngsters. Yeah. And he got a big lump on his leg again. Oh, dear. The vet looked at it and said he couldn't handle it. Said what Abner had was a genuine Charlie people. <laughs> Charlie people? Yep. Abner started going to a people doctor again, and this is where I came in, so I'll go out so long, kid. (laughs) He's an interesting old character. What are you looking at? Hey, out there, at the curb. There's a car pulling up. It's him. That's Doc Gamble. Come on, guys, come on. Let's duck out the back way. Don't be silly, McGee. Look, now, if you don't want him to examine you, just tell him so. Although I think you should. Tell him. You ever try to tell that guy anything? He'll have me down with his knee on my chest and a stick down my throat before I can even defend myself. Come on, grab your hat, quick. I'm not going to do it. Now, this is just silly. Uh, I'll see you later, kiddo. I'll be home for dinner. McGee, wait for baby! Billy Mills, the orchestra, and I'll walk alone. store. I want to pick up a pocket full of alfalfa Coronas before Doc Gamble catches up with me and makes me quit smoking. Well, somebody should. Mm. I've smelt those cigars. Woo! Them cigars don't hurt me, kiddo. Well, I don't know about you, but they certainly ruined my curtains. Well, that ain't to the point. To the point is, I don't need anything from Doc Gamble. Well, now I think you're being pretty silly about the whole thing. Well, I'm not. Why don't you let the doctor examine you just in case you do need anything, because... Ah, what does he know anyhow in the first place? Some examination. First thing he does, he sets me down in a chair and shines a flashlight in my ear. And if it don't come out the other ear, he claims my head has stopped up. Oh, now, he wouldn't do that. And he says, cross your legs, he says. 
I cross my legs and he wraps me on the knee with that rubber sledgehammer of his and if my hat don't fly off, my reflexes are bad. I don't Then he says, close your eyes, my boy, he says. And while I ain't looking, he buries a needle in my leg clean up to his elbow. Oh, you just... I let out a scream and jump six feet and he says, hmm, jittery, aren't you? (laughs) Big guy, I'm jittery. I'm in fine shape. I'm in the pink of condition. I'm sound of wind and limb. I don't know about your limb, but there's certainly nothing wrong with your wind. You said it. My jo- hey, take a look in Kramer's, will you? Doc might beat us down here, and if he's in there, I'm not going in. It's okay. The coast is clear. Come on. Okay. You keep an eye peeled while I get some cigars. And... Oh, hey, look. Kramer's got some new samples out here on the... Oh, cookies. Want one? No, thanks. Although I would like an ice cream soda. I'll need some nourishment if I... What's the matter? Foo. Mmm. These cookies are awful. Taste like sawdust. What's the name of them? What's it say on the basket there? Let's see. It says, Dr. Proctor's Poodle Biscuits. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe they'll make your hair curly, dearie. <laughs> well, I'll take a pocket full anyhow, in case we ever get a dog. <laughs> Grab some matches and a bunch of them sample pills. I want to check the phone booth. Do what? I'm checking the phone slot. No. No luck. Do you always look in the phone for nickels? Yep. Ever find one? Yep. When? 19 or 13. <laughs> one of these days, I'll find another one, too. Because I never pass a phone booth without giving it a shake. And, oh, hi, Ed. Sit right here, Molly. Hello, Mr. McGee. Hi, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Ed. What'll it be, Mrs. McGee? Would you like one of my own Ed Tatum specials, Mrs. McGee? I invented it. Oh, what's in it, Ed? Well, I line a soup bowl with sliced bananas, fresh peaches, candied pineapple. Then I put in a scoop of vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, maple nut, and pistachio ice cream. And top it with blackstrap molasses. Then Make I... it a chocolate soda, Ed. Please. Oh, yes, ma'am. How about you, Mr. McGee? Huh? Oh, I was watching the front door, Ed. I'll just have... Hey, would you like one of my Mr. McGee specials, Mr. McGee? Huh? I named it for you, Mr. McGee. Yeah? (laughs) Oh, that's swell, Ed. What's in it? Well, I line a soup bowl with sliced bananas, peaches, and candied pineapple. Mm -hmm. Then I put in a a root beer float, Ed. (laughs) I gotta watch the door, because if I see Doc Gamble, I don't want to see him. (laughs) Uh, How is that, sir? Well, uh, he's dodging the doctor, Ed. Himself is due for an examination, but he doesn't want to go. Oh, I know how that is, Mrs. McGee. My Uncle Fred was always like that. Hated to go to the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. He got a terrible cough about a year ago, but he wouldn't go to the doctor with it. Not him. He wouldn't, huh? No, sir. Aunt Fidelia kept after him to go, but he wouldn't. Uh She nagged him day and night to see the doctor, see the doctor, see the doctor. Did he go? No, sir. You know where he finally wound up? In the hospital? No, ma'am. Palm Beach, Florida. Just having a whale of a time. Yeah? Aunt Fidelia left a lot of insurance. Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Ed. Well, hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. What'll it be, sir? Would you like a Sunday? I got a new one I just invented called the Harlow Wilcox Special. Like me to make you one? Well, that's very flattering, Ed. What's in it? Well, I line a soup bowl with black stra- <laughs> Let me surprise you with it, huh? Okay, Ed. I'm brave. You don't know how brave, Junior. <laughs> Pass the straws, will you? Thanks. Say, your hand is all bandaged up, Mr. Wilcox. What happened? Well, I wondered when somebody was going to notice it, Molly. I have a very badly sprained finger. Yeah, what happened? Get it caught in the phone slot? Because that's what happened to me one time. No, no, no. (laughs) No, nothing, nothing like that, pal. I see. I was visiting some friends of mine last night, people with a six-month-old baby. Oh? I leaned over his crib, poked my finger at him, and said, Hitchy kitchy ow! (laughs) Oh, you bachelors. You should have said hitchy kitchy cool. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I started to say, but just as I kitchied, the little fella grabbed my finger, gave it a yank, and sprained it quite severely. Oh, oh now, Mr. Wilcox, how could a tiny No, thing... Molly, no, don't ask. <laughs> Bring your finger. Well, <laughs> Molly's very simple. The little man was raised on pet evaporated milk. <laughs> See what you because, you know, pet milk contains all the good nourishing milk substances a baby needs to ensure steady growth. Open the door. To help him build strong, straight bones. Good sound teeth. Yes, well, I'm sorry about your A finger. pet milk baby gets all the essential milk minerals in safe, easy-to-digest form. I'm sorry I asked about it, either. Combined, <laughs> combined with just the right amount of vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. Ah, uh, sure, 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 Junior, we know. Any baby that's raised on pet milk is bound to be as strong as Samson. 
Well, I'll go even further than that, pal. Huh? I know a pet milk baby who is stronger than Samson. Oh, please. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> Leave us not get carried away, then. <laughs> no, no, really, Molly, really. Two of my friends have baby boys. Sidney raised his on pet milk. Mm-hmm. Sam didn't. Yeah. And today, Sidney's son is stronger than Sam's son. <laughs> That is the worst. That's right. <laughs> Mr. McGee just came in. Dr. Gamble is coming. Oh, Doc Gamble? Oh, my gosh. Come on, Molly. Out the back way. Careful, dearie. Do you know where you're going? McGee! Hey, McGee! Hey, Dr. Chris, out the back door. Come on. Into the alley. Well, watch that alley, Mr. McGee. The trash cans are right out there. McGee! Oh. 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 Heavenly days. Watch it, dearie. Are you hurt? Ah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Is he coming? No. Let's get out of this alley. Uh... Skin my shin. Uh... Look at it. Peeled it like a ripe banana. Honest to goodness, if this isn't the silliest routine... Come on, out this way. Around the corner. Come on over this way. There's a little park here with some benches and... Oh, isn't this a nice little spot? Yeah. Handy, too. Yeah. Look at the little lily pond. Where are we, anyway? This is the back lawn of the city hall, kiddo. Oh, I've never been back here before. Yeah. I'm going to sit right here on this bench and rest a while. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, me too. Doc Gamble will never find us here. Well, hello there, ah. you two. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's Mayor Latrivia. Oh, hi, Latriv. <laughs> oh, it's a nice little park you got back here, boy. This where you hide out when the work gets too tough? <laughs> No, no. This little spot is entirely too vulnerable, McGee. Huh? When I really want to hide out and relax, I go catch a movie. Oh? I saw a wonderful new picture at the Bijou Theater last night, in fact. Oh, how was it? Believe me, Molly, I sat there just glued to my seat through the whole performance. <laughs> my gosh, did the manager do that to keep you from walking out on the picture, Homer? <laughs> do what? Blew you to your seat. Yeah. My goodness, if the picture was that bad, I think they'd be ashamed to even... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, ju- just a moment, Molly. I'm afraid you didn't quite... How'd they work it, Latrivia? Was the glue already on the seat, or... <laughs> Did the usher slap it on your pants with a brush as you came down the aisle? <laughs> look, look, McGee. I don't quite know how we got confused here, but I assure you nobody put any glue on my trousers. Just on the seat, McGee. Yes. Uh, no, no. Uh, no matter where they put it, Molly. If Latrivia sat in it, he was stuck with it. <laughs> By George, I'd sue the theater. That's what I do. You going to, Mr. Mayor? Well, of course not. For what? I haven't any suit at all. Well, I'll say you haven't any pants anyhow. <laughs> no, sir. Must have tore the bajunior out of it. I'd haul them guys into court so fast and make their heads Yeah, big... so would I. My goodness, when things are so bad that a theater manager has to use glue to keep his audience from walking yeah, out. Yeah, and they have to that... sneak up on you from behind and put the glue... Oh, no, stop it. <laughs> now, this whole thing is ridiculous. Well, you said it. Now, listen to me, please. When I said I was glued to my seat, I was merely using an old expression. Do you understand? Oh, just an expression. Certainly. I simply meant that the picture held my interest all the way. My attention was firmly gripped. <laughs> yeah, not at all it was firmly gripped. <laughs> oh, I'd like to have heard you when you got up to leave, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you just hear the trousers rip when he rose out of that glue? <laughs> I didn't rip my trousers when I froze out of the glue. I rose out of the stew. The glue! Look, when I said I was glued to the fleet. I glued to the fleet. See, I simply meant I employed the picture. Enjoyed the picture. You deliberately misconceived my scrutiny. My snootman. Tootman. I didn't say it. You always... I was... It was... I was... I was... (laughs) McGee? Yes, boy? I wonder if you'd let me take a snapshot of you from my desk. I've always wanted one. Oh, how nice. Oh, sure, boy. Where do you want me to stand? Well, over this way a little. I like the lily pond there in the background. Oh, okay, boy. In front of it? Like this? Back just a little, please, while I focus the camera here. Okay. Back a little more. Back. Back. Oh, Back. this ought to be about... Oh! Little... <laughs> That's the picture I wanted. <laughs> Lovely. Good day, Molly. The 
King's Men, and I'll always be following you. Footsteps, 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 footsteps. Following you, following you, following, following you. I'm following, following you. I'll always be following you. I'm loving you so, and I want you to know I'll always be following you. Whatever you say, whatever you do, I'll always be following you. on this streetcar, at least. Yeah. Let me ring out my hat again. <laughs> Boy, I haven't been soaked like this since March the 15th. <laughs> yes, and it was such a little lily pond, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've seen you fall in Dugan's Lake and you weren't any... Fall to the liver, Mike. Fall to the liver, and we're all free for <laughs> gone at this whole thing. It's Doc Gamble's fault, too, the big, fat, money-grabbing chiseler. If hadn't been for him trying to lure me into his dad ratted torture mill today, I wouldn't have had to go running all over town, falling over trash cans and getting drowned. In... Bless you. Thanks. I'd be landing in my hammock, taking it easy. Talk about the Travers, next. Talk about the Travers. Connection with me, the Travers, and all the other women. <laughs> Why does everything always have to happen to me? My shin hurts, my back aches, I'm... <gasps> Bless you. As soon as we get home, I'll put you to bed, dear. Go off the last next. Go off the last one, change for nip. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, this is us. How can you tell? Well, we always get off at Gorfer, whatever he said. <laughs> oh, boy, I feel awful. Come on. Go off the last one. All out. Go off the last one. Nip, car. Hold my arm, Molly. Mother's got you, dearie. Don't you fret. What's up, please? Sit your first motor trust company. Board. <laughs> How do I get into these things, anyhow? You're just unlucky, that's all. I'm just a pig-headed, sparrow-brained knuckle skull. That's what I'm just a... Not only that, but my feet are wet, too. You're wet all over. What makes me so stupid? I didn't study for it. <laughs> of course you didn't, sweetheart. Other guys, when their doctor calls them to come and have a checkup, they come and have a checkup. Oh, no, not me. I gotta be a smart aleck. I gotta be a wise guy. I don't need a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Thanks. No, I got to run all over town, skinning my shins, falling in lily ponds, getting banged up. Who's that on our front porch? Why, why, it looks like Dr. Gamble. Well, so you finally got home. Oh, Doc, am I glad to see you. Where can I lay down for my checkup? Right here on the porch? Okay. Help me lay down, Bolly. What's this? What goes on? Well, your nurse phone doctor said you wanted McGee to come to the office. Said you'd pick today for his checkup. So? Was that what she told you? That's what she told her. That's what she told her. Oh, no. That girl never will learn to read my writing. Huh? I owe little Grown Bundle here some money from bowling. I'll say you owe me some money. Ten bucks, that's all. So I asked my nurse to tell you to stop in today and pick your check up. Yeah. <laughs> what? You mean... Is well, that... I, I saw you at Kramer's, but you left before I could get you, so huh? I brought the check over. Oh. 
Now, where do you hurt, my boy? Oh, every place. Oh, I feel ridiculous. Hibber and Molly return in a moment. One ingredient that good cooks use day after day in all sorts of everyday foods is pet evaporated milk. There's just no substitute for it in making good juicy meatloaf, scalloped potatoes, creamy smooth gravy and sauces, cake frostings, delicious cream pies, and dozens of other family favorites. Pet evaporated milk makes such a delicious difference in foods because there's such a difference in the milk itself. Good, sweet country milk concentrated to double richness by evaporation. That's what pet milk is. Every pint of pet milk has the same natural nourishment and goodness that's in a full quart of good, sweet country milk. To use in place of ordinary milk, you mix pet milk half and half with water. To use in place of coffee cream or whipping cream, you take pet milk just as it comes from the handy can. Get several cans of pet milk at your grocer's tomorrow. And like other good cooks, let pet milk help you to make everyday foods extra delicious, extra nourishing. of all the things you said about Dr. Gamble, did Yeah, he sure was small to me. He, he wouldn't even charge me for doctoring me up. I know. Yeah. He said it was a pleasure. <laughs> he seemed to enjoy it. He even tore up the check. <laughs> oh, good old doc. <laughs> I ought to do... Hey, wait a minute. That check he tore up was... He owed me that. Rest, dear. That... Rest. Oh, okay. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Sometimes an ex-serviceman prefers to spend a quiet Memorial Day with his family. And that's the way it is with ex-Marine Jim Carter until a phone call changes his plans and leads to an unforgettable day for the Carters in Mary Lee Taylor's Story of the Week next Saturday morning. Right after the story, you'll hear Mary Lee Taylor's Recipe of the Week for Savory Pork Steaks, a money-saving one-dish dinner that's sure to please the husband. For a half hour of entertainment and service, tune your radio dial to NBC next Saturday morning for Mary Lee Taylor. Next, it's What's My Line on NBC.